Welcome to Products One YouTube series. Uh, today we are looking at advanced uh, capabilities of multi-body design. So if you recall last week, we posted a video that shows multi-body design in the context of a normal part design level. All right. So if you did not see that, please check that out. So for those of you um, who are not familiar with multi-body design, is the ability to have bodies and whatever features that define that body in, in Creo 7.0. All right. So what I have here now is sheet metal. So let's say, for an example, I want to put a brass inset in here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a normal copy geometry and I'm going to leverage uh, what you call an already existing part. So this is the insert in question. So I will say I want to place this inset. I can choose to say, look, I'm going to utilize a system of coordinate systems. So this is where I want to place that. Most importantly, I'm going to say follow the surface. You'll see the significance of that in a second. I will also choose the geometry that I want to pull through. And that's pretty much it. So what this gives me is an inset made out of brass inside my sheet metal. And it automatically is becoming what we call body two. Okay. So now with, with that, I can do the following. I can say, let me utilize the multi-body uh, design capability, particularly the Boolean operation in this instance. I want to subtract uh, the geometry from the sheet metal and the modifying geometry will be that brass component. I want to keep that brass component. I don't want to take it away. However, I want my cut to be normal to the surface. So that means that if I take body two and hide it, that chamfer, that is a result of the second part that is now in body two is now defining the overall geometry. So the significance of follow uh, the surface uh, option that I chose is because of the following. So if I unbend this, irregardless of where the bend is, that inset will also always follow the surface. So that's the key thing. So what we've just learned is you can utilize punches, notches, and so forth, and use them as second bodies, and you can get some amazing benefits from that. That's now on sheet metal. So let's have a look on flexible modeling. So flexible modeling, people uh, who don't know what flexible modeling is, this is direct a solid uh, modeling, uh, what you call capabilities in Creo parametric. So what that means is that I can select a surface. It can be a cut. I can actually move it. Bear in mind, this is an imported geometry. I can change the scale. The, I can do radical moves onto this. But that's not the point uh, for this case. We want to see how multi-body design can play a role in flexible modeling. So let's take this into context. If I've got a component like this, all right, and I want to make some radical changes. So if I were to say move, I can say, look, I don't want you to attach to this and so forth. You run into problems because of, let's say, the tangency of surfaces or maybe the way this geometry was constructed. Remember, it comes from another CAD source. So you can run into problems when trying to modify geometry like this, even with a powerful tool like flexible modeling. However, with multi-body design now, you have the following capabilities. So what I have here is just the normal datum plane, and I'm going to split the geometry. Which geometry? This one. I'm going to split it here. And I can flip and say, look, make that. Bear in mind, I'm only having one body. Now, after splitting this, it generates two bodies. So what that means is I've got body one and, of course, body two. So why is this important? It's important because now I can go to flexible modeling, select the body two, and move it. I can say, look, how about I do something like this? I can move it to here or do something as radical as, as this. Maybe even rotate it a bit and just put it, let's see, there. All right. I have to admit, this is something that will be significantly harder if I did not have the ability to split that geometry. 
And then, of course, I can rely on normal, powerful, cryoparametric uh, features such as a blend feature where I can say, look, I want to take a section. I'm not going to sketch this. I'm just going to select that edge and this one here and join the two. Of course, I can modify the tangency of these two. And just like that, of course, I can select these bodies, match them to make them a solid one uh, component or whatever the case is. I can say, take this and match the two bodies, this one here and that, and now I'm having a solid part with that radical change. Now, that was multi-body design using a flexible modeling. So let's push things up a level a bit. So what I have here is a solid plot, uh, part. This belongs to a clash uh, plate. It, it's one of our training files. So what I've done is I've already created a cutout. Uh, as you can see, I've got body one, and that's body two, and this is body one. Okay. So now, why is this significant? It's significant because I can do things like this. I can localize operations. For an example, generating of lattices. So this entire area will be made of a lattice. So I can say that will be on body two. So that entire region is now going to be dedicated to lattice. So in fact, I can say I want to have a formula driven lattice. I can specify the shell type or whatever the case is. Even say, uh, let's maybe generate a shell. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to generate a shell onto this. And I can even modify the size point, point 0.75 or whatever the case is. Let's see. Ah, that's fine. All right. So I can specify the density and, and the like. All right. So I can say replace the body now with the lattice. I can say create the shell and let's make it 0.25. That's now going to be the overall thickness of this. And just like that, if I say accept, you will see now inside that body, I now have this lattice structure. So of course this could be 3D printed or whatever the case is. All right, so I can say, this is how it's going to look like. All right, so this is one of the impressive things that one can do with a, what you call, multi-body design for additive manufacturing. So I'm not going to, all right, so that is a small little glimpse of generative design. So before I leave, uh, PDC hosted live works uh, last week. Uh, all that content is now available to everyone to view. Uh, uh, keynote that dress from our uh, PDC CEO, Jim, and a lot of other interesting demonstration and what direction PDC is actually taking. Please, 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 you can go and view that content. The link will be at the bottom. Until next time, goodbye.